The following is a paid presentation made possible by the support of the friends and partners of Inspiration Ministries. I am not here by coincidence or by accident. I'm here by divine appointment, and there is a word from God tonight. And if you've got a Bible, I want you to open it with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 26. Those of you that are watching uh, by television, wherever you're watching, uh, wherever you are all over this globe, if you've got a Bible, I want you to get it. And I want you to open with me to the 26th chapter of the book of Genesis and as we prepare to read the Word of God I want you to know that God is never reacting or responding to anything the enemy does God is not a reactor he's a God of action he has a plan and a solution before the problem arises can you say amen to me here? and so as we look into the Word of God I want us to understand now that one of the things that I believe the Spirit of the Lord is after regarding all of his children in this moment is that we come to understand that if we are going to see what God has purposed and planned for us, we're going to have to go back to the principles of his word and look into it and ferret out what needs to be known so that we can overcome what is coming against us in this hour. Can you say amen? amen? Genesis chapter 26, and I'm going to begin the reading at verse number 1. Again, if you have a Bible, I want you to get it. If, uh, if you don't just listen, I promise you, everything I read is in the book. Now, if you're in this, uh, in this room with me, I want you to understand I'm, a, I'm an interactive preacher. So I, I, need, I, I, you know, I need somebody to shout amen from time to time. Amen. So don't, don't, don't make me come down there. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 26 and verse number 1. If you're there, say, I am. I am. And the word of God reads. So pay attention. I'm going to read a few verses of scripture. All of it is vitally significant. Genesis chapter 26 and verse number 1. It says, there was a famine in the land. Somebody say, a famine. famine. Somebody say, recession. recession. Somebody say, economic downturn. Yeah, there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land. Somebody say, Dwell there. And I will be with you and bless you. Now this word bless is a significant word. There's a lot of preaching and teaching going on in the body of Christ right now about the blessing because there is a revelation here that the Spirit of God wants us to capture. The word bless means to empower to prosper, to empower to succeed. The blessing is an empowerment. It is something God puts on you. Did you hear what I just said? It is something that God puts on you and I as a product of our obedience to his word. Now, if I had time, which I do not, if I had time, which I do not, I would trace the fact that this blessing that comes on Isaac in just a few minutes we're going to read is the same blessing that God put on Adam in the garden when the Bible says he 
blessed him and said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion. Are you still here? That is the blessing. That's the empowerment. It's something that God puts on an individual. He will put it on a life. He'll put it on a family. He'll put it on a ministry. And when it's there, you better recognize it's there. Here, oh God. Oh, I came loaded, I'm telling you. When this thing is on you, I, I'm ready to preach already. I got more scripture to read. Watch this. When this thing is on you, supernatural things happen. And this is why when somebody has the blessing of God on their lives, like, like, like this ministry that God has raised up here, the blessing is here. You can't do this without the blessing. Are you still here? The, the blessing is, when somebody has the blessing on their lives, you need to be very, very cautious how you deal with them. And you need to make sure that you are a blessing to people with the blessing. Why? Because God said this to, please hear this, children, don't miss me. Those of you watching me by television, don't miss this. God said this to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. He said to him, once that blessing comes on him, he said, once this thing is on you, anybody who blesses you, you better hear me. <laughs> you better hear me. Oh you, oh, you better hear me now. He said, once it's on you, touch your neighbor and say, it don't work if it ain't on you. It don't work if it ain't. But once it's on you, anybody who blesses you will get blessed. Watch this. And he said, anybody who curses you, this is in your Bible. And anybody who curses you will be cursed. Now, it doesn't say God will curse them because God's not a curser. He's a blesser. God doesn't curse because he's got no curse to give. You can't give what you ain't got. And God does that. But the word curse in the Hebrew, if you study it out, it, 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 it comes from the, it, it's the Hebrew word mara or moro. It comes from the same uh, uh, root from which we get our English word mortuary. Or mortician, having to do with death. Are you still here? Yes. To, to, to have the curse operating on your life means that you have, and you don't have to take my word for it, you can study it out in your Strong's Concordance. It means to have the disregard of God. So, so watch this. What, what God is saying is, if, if, if the curse is operating, when you bless somebody who has the blessing on them, supernatural example, but he said anybody who disregards you, if you've got the blessing on you, if they disregard you, I will disregard them. So, oh, you better hear me now. Grab your neighbor's hand and tell them how you treat me has a lot to do with how God responds to you. No, you didn't hear what I just said. Look at your neighbor and say, how you treat me has a lot to do with how God responds to you. Now, th now, that, now that's, that's when you got the blessing on you. Oh, I, I'm, 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 I'm way off my mark here right now. But that's why God, I'm gonna, and I'm going to show this to you in just a minute. That's why God tells you, especially when you're dealing with your brothers and sisters in Christ, agree with your adversary quickly. Don't you get in strife with somebody with the blessing on them. Because if you mistreat somebody with the blessing on them, Oh, you're not with me here. Let me show this to you. Let me, let, let me show this to you. I, I, I got to read some more Bible. Verse 3. Verse 3. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and to your descendants I give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands. Somebody say lands. Amen. And in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be empowered to prosper. Verse 5, because Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Verse 6 says, so Isaac dwelt in Gerar. If you got a pen, underline it. At home, if you got a pen, underline it. That's important. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar. Now watch this. And the men of the place asked about his wife. And he said, she is my sister. For he was afraid to say, she is my wife. Because he thought, lest the men of the place kill me for Rebekah, because she is fine. King James says, beautiful to behold. I just put it in the vernacular. Verse number eight. 
just wanted to see if you're listening. Verse number eight. Now it came to pass when he had been there a long time. Would you please look at your neighbor and tell them Isaac just lied. Just tell them that Isaac just lied. <laughs> look at your other neighbor and tell them he lied. Don't, don't make it pretty. He just lied. Okay, watch me. Verse n n n number eight. Now it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked through a window and saw, and there was Isaac showing endearment to Rebekah, his wife. Then Abimelech called Isaac and said, quite obviously, she is your wife. So how could you say she is my sister? Isaac said to him, because I said, lest I die on account of her. And Abimelech said, what is this that you've done? One of my people might have lain with your wife, and you would have brought guilt on us. So Abimelech charged all his people, saying, he who touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Look at verse 12. Then. Somebody shout then. then. Shout it again. One more time. Yeah. Now, now I, I have done it. I've heard preachers do it, and I'm not faulting anybody. But it says, then Isaac so. Are you still here? It says, then Isaac so, which meant something happened before Isaac so that had a direct impact on the results Isaac got when he so. Stay with me now. In other words, if you don't examine what happened before the then, then you won't get the kind of results Isaac got. So it's not just sowing. There's something that you got to do before the sowing that causes the effect. Are you still in the room? Stay, stay, stay with me now. So it says, then Isaac sowed. Somebody say, then. Then Isaac sowed in the lamb and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. How many of you could stand to reap? No, 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 no. Don't, don't play with this. I mean, how many of you could stand to reap a hundredfold this year? Not next year. In the, how many of you could stand to be in a whole nother dimension 12 months from now than you are right now? Touch two people next to you and say, it is possible. It is then Isaac sowed in that land, reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And God put that empowerment to prosper on him. And the man began to prosper. After the blessing was on him, he began to prosper. And he continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks, of herds, a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Now hear me real quickly because i got to move fast. And I want you to hear this. I want you to get this, and I want you to write this down. God has always had a strategy that is revealed in his word of increasing and advancing his people in times of famine, in times of recession, and in times of economic downturn. It has always been a strategy of Jehovah. If his people will hear him and adhere to his word to bless them when everybody else seems to be challenged and struggling. I want you to understand that recession that is going on out there is not your recession. I'm going to say it again. It's not mine. I, I shared with our congregation, I said, sometimes you listen, pay, pay attention to enough news to find out what's going on and then turn it off. Because the longer you keep hearing that stuff, the more you start believing it. And the more you start believing it, the more you'll start speaking it. And when you start speaking it, you bring it authority to come to pass in your life. Don't have time to preach that tonight, but nudge your neighbor and say, that was free. Watch me now. Well, 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 watch me now. God has always had this strategy. This passage opens up. Now, I want you to get this. Because the Bible says there was a famine in the land. A famine in the land. Somebody say famine. famine. And it says that this was a famine besides the first famine that occurred in the days of Abraham, his father. Now, what does that tell me? That tells me that famine and recession and economic downturn is cyclical. It comes around. It keeps coming around. It's not going to stop coming around. You didn't hear what I just said. 
It's not going to stop. It's not anybody's fault. It's not the president's fault. The spirit of the Lord said something to me, and I want to lift my voice and say it loudly. He said, son, you must understand, and I want you to tell my people, you are presiding, meaning we in the body of Christ. You are presiding over the breakdown of a system that was never designed to supply your need anyway. You didn't hear what I just said. He said, you are watching the breakdown of a world system that was never designed for you to live in. Okay, you're going to make me work. You're going to make me work. Y'all in, out there in TV land. Look. So understand it. There ain't enough stimulus to stimulate this. It's dying. There, ain't, there isn't enough money to pump into this economy. You're going to have to get off this breaking down system, this system that is breaking down, and you're going to have to get on God's system. Yeah. Now stay with me. I want, you to, I want you to write this down because God gave this to me, and, 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 and he, God gave this to me. I, I, we have taught it, preached it, said it. People have caught on to it. We wrote a song about it. Get this and hear it. Sowing and reaping, not buying and selling, not working and wages, is the key to provision in the kingdom of God. I'm going to say it again. Sowing and reaping, not buying and selling. It's okay to buy and sell. But you can't trust that system. Not working and wages. You need to have a job. But you can't trust in your job. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you in just a moment that your job, ma'am, was never intended to meet your need. I'm going to say that again. See, because if we're going to switch systems, we got to change our thinking. we got to get our minds renewed to the word of God and stop taking what grandma and grandpa and religion have passed down to us. Thank God for grandma and grandpa. I love them. But just because they said it doesn't mean it's right. And if, my, if grandma, grandpa, and anybody else contradicts what's in this Bible, then I'm going with what's in this Bible. I'm going to say this again. I'm going to say it one more time because I understand that some of what I'm saying is stuff that, that people haven't really heard. I want you to get this. Your job was never intended by God to meet your need. There is no place in the word of God where you will hear the words job gyra. No, no place. It's not there. No place in the word where you hear the word job gyra. Why? Because your job was never intended to meet your need. It is Jehovah Jireh. And that's why you can have five jobs and still not be making it because your job was not intended to meet your need. You say, Bishop McClendon, how can you say that? Because I can read. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 28 says this. Watch this. It says, let him who stole steal no more. But rather let him labor with his hands so that he may have something to give, not so that he can live. Now, you, you, I'm talking Bible now to you. He said your job is for your giving, not for your living. Your job is for your seed. So you need to stop working for a living today. It is a cursed system. I'm going to say it again. God intended for you to give off the fruit of your labor and live off the fruit of your giving. See, when you get in the kingdom of God and you start working this system, there is no such thing as a fixed income. You can't fix the income of a sower. You didn't hear what I just said? You cannot fix a sower's income. Look at your name and say, I will never use that term again. I will never say it. My income is not fixed. My income is not fixed. You can't fix 
a, a sower's income. Why? Because God says that when, when you sow a seed, he will multiply the seed sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. What does that mean, Bishop? It means that you are supposed to be living off more than you earn. No, you didn't hear what I said. You are supposed to be living off more than you earn. People ask me all the time, so then, you know, how much do you make? I say, it doesn't matter how much I make because I live off more than I make. Amen. <laughs> are you still here? I say, are you still here? Look at your neighbor and say, you cannot fix a sower's income. You can't do it. Please hear what I'm about to say. Now watch this. The Bible says there was a famine, a recession, a downturn. God says to Isaac, do not go down to Egypt. Now, why does he tell him that? Because if you go back to Genesis 12, which I do not have time to go to right now, you will find that Isaac's father, Abraham, when he experienced the same thing in his lifetime, he went to Egypt. There was provision in Egypt. So Abraham, and Abraham had just started walking with God. He had not learned how to walk by faith yet. He hadn't learned God's system yet. How many of you know this is a progressive revelation we come into with God? We get saved, we get born again, and then we begin to learn and get our minds renewed to the things of the kingdom. Well, in Genesis 12, Abraham had just met God. So when stuff starts drying up, Abraham looks around and he goes and looks where is provision, where there is provision, and he sees there's provision in Egypt. So Abraham goes down to Egypt, and God let Abraham, Abraham do it because Abraham didn't have a strong relationship with God yet. Now here it is a generation later and the same thing happens to Isaac and God says to him, I am not going to let you do what I let your daddy do. I want you to hear me. I'm not going to allow you to do what I allowed your father to do because your father has learned how to walk with me and he has taught you how to do it. And so now I need you to live by faith. And let me say this to you. One of the reasons that many in the body of Christ are not breaking out of this recession like we've been able to break out of others is because God is saying, I am not going to allow you just to escape anymore. You've got to start putting my word to work and start doing what my word says. You are not getting out of this one like you got out of the last one. I am going to demand now that you walk by faith. I am going to demand now that you put my word to work. I am going to demand now that you work my system. And going to church is not enough. I want you to hear me. This is an hour where the word doers and the church goers are being separated. And if you're going to church and you are not doing the word of God, everybody's going to know it. I, I love you. I'm just the mailman. Don't shoot the mailman. Watch me now. So God tells Isaac, get it. He says, I let your daddy work that system, that old system. I'm not letting you do it. Are you listening to me? So here's what he said. He says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to Gerard. Go to the land that I tell you and dwell there. Now, what is that? Somebody say word land. That's what that is. That's word land. Word land. What do you mean word land? It's the land where God said go. In other words, he says this. He says, Isaac, I'm not going to let you just go anywhere and do anything. You are going to have to do exactly what my word tells you to do. So the first thing you got to do, watch this now. If you're going to sow and see a harvest come in, you got to be in word land. That means you got to be doing the word of God. I'm going to lift my voice. I'm going to say it loud. I want you to understand it. If you are not a tither. I know, I know, I know somebody's got to say it. If you are not a tither, listen, you can have every preacher lay hands on you and pour oil on you till you look like a greased pig at a county fair. There is nothing that is going to break through for you because you are not in word land. You're not in word land. 
You're not in Wordland. Come on, shout now. The Bible says, bring ye all the tithe. Mahasra. The word tithe is the Hebrew word mahasra. It means the tenth, which means you can't bring God a few pennies and call it a tithe. A tithe isn't what I say it is. It's what God says it is, and God says it's a tenth. And lest you say to me, Bishop, that's Old Testament. No, it's not. That's Old Covenant. No, it's not. That's under the law. No, it's not. The tithe principle was before the law. You didn't hear what I just said. The tithe principle was before the law. God gave it to Abraham before there was a law. And actually, the tithe principle was in the Garden of Eden. It's the thing that blew this whole thing up. When God's man wouldn't do what he was supposed to do with the tithe. Y'all are looking at me loud like you want to hurt me, okay? That's okay. I am not scared of you. I want you to understand it. I'm called of God, so let me say this. The tithe principle was in the garden. Let me show it to you. That tree in the middle of the garden that God said, you shall not eat of it. If the, the day that you eat of it, you, you shall surely die. In other words, God said, everything out here is yours. That's mine. That's my, somebody say principle, principle, principle. Everything out here is yours. That's mine. You can have all this. Don't touch mine. You touch mine. And what happens? The curse goes into effect. And that's what happened. Genesis 3, 17. He said, cursed is the ground for your sake. Now understand this. God never cursed the man. God never cursed the ground because not even God can curse what God has blessed. And he had already blessed Adam. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. See, God, God, won't, God won't curse what he's blessed. You and I can mess it up. God won't curse it. Are you still here? So watch this. Number one, look at Jim and say, you got to be dwelling in word land. You got to be in word land. In other words, you got to be a tither and you got to be a giver. You got to be a tither and you got to be. These are not suggestions that God made. This is God's economic system. Bring ye all the tithe and the offering. You have robbed me in tithes and offering. This is God's system. And, and so you can have preachers pray for you. You can come down to altars and ball and squall. And you can pray. And I'm not being insensitive because there are people who are actually hurting now. I'm talking about really hurting. There are people, and the Spirit of God said this to me today, there are people under such oppression and such fear and such intimidation that they cannot sleep. They are crying themselves to sleep, and they have been crying out for an answer. But I want you to understand this. The Bible doesn't say pray, and it shall be given to you. It doesn't say fast, and it shall be given to you. It says give, and it shall be given to you. That's the principle that works the increase. Come on, somebody shout. I got, I got about 12 minutes. So watch, 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 watch. I got to show you this. So first of all, he was in Wordland. Look at your neighbor and ask him, are you in Wordland? Are you in Wordland? You that are watching me by television, my question is, are you in Wordland or are you just a church attender? Are you a tither? Are you obeying God's economic principles or are you trying to get by because in a recession in a famine it shows up when everything's going well you can kind of slick slide with greasy grace and say amen with everybody else but when stuff gets tight you got to be doing the word of God somebody needs to say amen in here now watch the second thing, the, the, the second thing that happens here, before Isaac sowed, I want you to check it out, this is that he has this encounter concerning his wife. And he's afraid because his wife is fine. And he's afraid that as he is going through the enemy territory, they will kill him for his wife. So now what does this tell me about Isaac right now? He's not trusting God with his stuff. 
He hasn't learned how to trust God. He hasn't learned how to cast all his care on the Lord. He hasn't learned yet how to be careful for nothing but in everything through prayer and something. He hasn't learned how to commend his stuff to God and trust God to keep that which he commits to him. So he says, you listen, when they ask, say you're my sister, not my wife. So I don't get killed for your sake. The Bible says, the Bible says that she says it. One of the guys in the land takes his wife. Are you here? And, and, and this is God's man of faith and power. Letting somebody take his wife. I just want you to check, check this out. So, so, so he lets her take, lets him take his wife. And then the king sees him showing affection, that the kind of affection that wouldn't be shown between a brother and sister. Obviously. Okay. So he says, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> that ain't your sister. <laughs> Come on. We're, can we be real here? That ain't your sister. Okay. <laughs> And, 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 and he says, why have you brought this upon us? Now, this is a very interesting thing because what you find is that the very same thing happened to Abraham back in Genesis chapter 12 when he went through the land. And Abraham told the same lie a generation before that Isaac told. Now, what does that tell me? And why does the Bible record that it happened in both situations? And why does it happen right before both of them prosper? Because after the same thing happened to Abraham, the Bible says when Abraham did it and the king found out that Sarah was his wife and not his sister, the Bible says that the king supplied Abraham not just with his wife back, but gave him donkeys and silver and gold so he prospered him after the thing was over. Now, what is the word of God telling us here? He's showing us a satanic strategy, and he's showing us something that you and I have got to overcome if we're going to prosper, especially in a time of recession. And what is that? It is that the, what you've, got to, you've got to defeat the strategy of strife in your life and in your house. You need to hear what I'm going to say. You need to hear what I'm going to say. It is no accident that in times of economic downturn and recession, things begin to escalate. I was, I was reading Forbes magazine on the plane over here, and it says in Forbes magazine this week, middle class folks are finding that a raise or a second paycheck doesn't always mean living better. It said, is it time to work less? And then it talks about the effect that the recession is having on lives. And watch this. You've got to understand this. The enemy knows that in a time of recession, if he can break covenant relationships. Stay with me. And I'm not just talking about husband and wife. I'm talking about your relationship to your man of God. Your relationship to your woman of God. Your relationship to your church and to your ministry. Because your relationship there is a key to your overcoming a time of economic recession. Listen now. You get to the place where, you know what, I don't think I'm going to church. I don't feel like it. I'm too tired. I'm depressed. I don't feel like it. Well, I would give, but I got a little less money this week than I did last week. And I just don't know. And I don't know what God is doing. And I don't know where the Lord is. And I don't know what's going to happen. And suddenly, and suddenly, you're breaking relationship that God knows need to be in place for you to prosper. You're staying away from the house of God. You're not agreeing with men and women in prayer. Watch this. You're not sowing your time, your effort, your gift, your energy because you're at home and you're depressed. And the enemy knows if he can keep you separated from people you're supposed to be in relationship with, he can break your prosperity. Stay with me. I wish I had time to show it to you in the word. After Abraham defeats the strife strategy, after Isaac defeats the strife strategy, then both of them prosper. 
Watch this now. The Bible says where there is strife and envy, there is every evil work. If you allow strife to get in your ministry, in your household, in your workplace, if you allow yourself to begin breaking relationship with people you're supposed to be in covenant with. The enemy knows he can break down your... See, this is... This is not, this prosperity in the kingdom of God is not magic. It is not Russian roulette. There are principles that we have to put into effect. Are you still here? I'm almost done. Those of you watching by, me by television, get ready now. Because you're going to sow something here. Because the faith of God is coming alive in you. Hear what I'm about to say. After Abraham defeated that strategy. After Isaac defeated that strategy. Then the Bible says, then Isaac sowed. Hello. <laughs> then Isaac sowed. Now, would you look at me right here? Because what I'm about to say to you may be one of the most important things I've said to you all night. The Bible says, then Isaac sowed in that land. In what land? In the, in the land of where the word of God told him to be. In the, he was in the land where God's word commanded him to be. He's a tither. He's a sower of seed. He's in word land. Then Isaac sows. Please hear because I'm, I'm, I'm reading this, Ozzy, not long ago. And the spirit of God said something to me. He said, son, I want you to understand something. He said, the ground that Isaac sowed into had received no more rain or no more water than the farmer that was next to him. So it's not just the ground. It's what's on the person sowing the seed. The difference was that in Isaac's land, there was a man who had the blessing on him. Because he had obeyed God. Because he was where God told him to be. And he had defeated the strategy of strife. And he wouldn't get into fights and odds with people because he understood his prosperity would be affected. So it's not just the ground. It's the man or the woman that's in the ground. You better hear what I'm saying. I said you better hear what I'm saying. It's not just the ground. It's what's on the man or woman that's in the ground. That's why God says, they hear me. That's why God says, when you see somebody with the blessing on them, that's who you sow into. Don't let the enemy talk you out of sowing into blessed people because you think, well, they're blessed. They don't need it. They got all this. They don't need it. God said, no, what you don't understand is that's where you need to sow into somebody who's got it on them, who has the fruit of it. Because it's not just the ground. It's who's in the ground. Look at your neighbor and tell him the blessing goes where I go. Because it's on me. See, that's why when you get this thing on you, you can go to a dead company. And because you're there, the thing will begin to spring up. You are the key to the prosperity. And this cannot happen unless you are a sower. So watch this. The Bible says, Isaac made a decision. I'm going to do and stay where God's word tells me to stay. I am not going to lean to my own understanding I'm not going to try to figure out how tithing and giving is going to prosper me. I'm simply going to trust God. God said, do it. That's what I'm staying. God said, this is his plan. That's what I'm doing. I will not be moved from where God says I'm to be. Number one. Number two. I will not. Look at your name and say, I will not. I will not. 
I refuse, I refuse. No, matter how ugly you get, <laughs> I will not get into strife with you. I will not be at odds with you. I will not allow division to come between me and you. I'm going to be the first to repent even if you're wrong. Because my prosperity is at stake. Am I helping anybody or am I just sweating for no reason? Those of you that are watching me by television. And the Bible says, when Isaac did that, when he made a decision, I'm going to be where God tells me to be. I'm not moving. I'm not going to move my understanding. This is God's system. I accept it. I'm talking to people right now. You're watching me by television. And as the word of God has been coming forth to you, the spirit of God has convicted you about some things that you've got to get right in your life. And listen to me. We can pray for you and I'm going to pray, but you've got to make up in your mind tonight, I'm going to do God's word. I'm not looking for a one-time fix. I'm looking for the blessing to come on my life to the degree that wherever I go, I'm a blessing to people who need to be blessed. Secondly, listen to me, listen to me, because you, you're getting ready to sow. So you hear some of you watching me my television. You're getting ready to sow, and we're going to sow, and we're going to pray over this, and there are phones available right now. So I want you in about five minutes, they are going to be jammed and locked, and they're going to be jammed and locked for about 20 minutes. So I want you to get near the phone now because the word of God is coming to you. Hear me. The Bible says, then Isaac sowed. When he, he made a decision... I'm not going to get in strife. I'm not going to let anything. It says, then Isaac sowed. Somebody say, then, then, then. Then Isaac sowed. And in the same year, he reaped a hundredfold in a recession. I'm going to try this side because y'all left me. I said, in a recession, in a famine. When businesses were shutting down and people were looking for jobs and people were trying to figure out how they're going to make it, a man of God sowed. Come on, somebody shout a minute in this room. Watch me. So the world would say, well, now's not the time to sow. Now's the time to get all you can and can all you get. Now's the time to hold on to it. Now's the time to cut back. No, no, no. Now's the time to sow. Now's the time to release your seed. Now's the time to say, God, I trust your word. I trust you. I've decided to dwell where your word says I am not going to get in strife. And here is my seed. I'm presenting it before you and I'm believing you. Now, I want you to hear me. Yeah. Sir, I want you to hear me. Ma'am, I want you to hear me. I want you to go to the phone tonight. And I want you to say, I heard that yelling, screaming, sweating boy preach. And something happened on the inside of me. I want you to understand what you are sensing, what you are feeling. It's not natural. It is supernatural. It is not emotion. It is not manipulation. It is the Spirit of God dealing with your spirit, letting you know this is the answer you've been looking for. Here's what I want you. I want you to go to the phone and I want you to say, I heard the word. I'm making a decision. I'm going to dwell in word land. I'm going to do the word of God. And I'm going to release this seed to God in this season. And I'm believing for a turnaround. Somebody say a turnaround. That's, what, that's the word I heard. I'm going to believe for a turnaround. And some of you in the next 24 hours, you're going to see it. As surely as I'm standing here in the next 48 hours, in the next seven days, this is not something that's going to happen a year from now. It's going to start happening right now. The favor of God is going to come to you. I want you to go to the phone and I want you to get a seed and say, you know what? I'm sowing a seed of 600. Somebody say 600. That's what the man of God has spoken that is to be done in this season. And I came into agreement with it. And I'm believing God for it. And I want you that are listening to me to go to the phone right now. 
there's a number on your screen. There is somebody there to agree and to pray with you and tell them what your prayer need is. Tell them what it is you're believing God for and offer that seed before the Lord. And I want you to get it in the hands of the man and the woman of God before we pray in the next few minutes. Now, there are some of you that would say, Bishop McClendon, listen, I, I would do that tonight if I had it. My faith is alive. I've heard the word and I'm believing. I would do that tonight if I had it, but I don't have the entirety of it. Then here's what I want you to do. I want you to consider sowing a seed of $200 over the next three months. And you make a commitment tonight to get a seed in your hand and to bring it before the Lord. Now, now why is that important? Why is that important? Listen to what the Word of God says. The Word says that God will give seed to the sower. Somebody say, to the sower. That means you've got to qualify as a sower in order to get more seed. So you got to start sowing where you are, and God gives more seed to the sower. Somebody say amen. amen. So you say, Bishop, I don't have it all tonight. Then what I want you to do is I want you to get on the phone. Go to it now, sir. Go to it now, ma'am, and say, listen, here's what I'm going to do. Starting right now, I'm going to sow 200 over the next three months for a seed of $600. That's what we're lifting before the Lord in this season. That's what God laid on the man of God's heart to ask for in this season. And God speaks specifically to his servants at certain times and says, tell them to have the people bring this to me and we're going to agree over it. Now I want you to hear me because there are lines available and, 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 and people are waiting there to pray with you and agree with you. And you've been asking God, what do I do? And the answer has just come to you softly, Larry and son. Listen to me now, hear me. Hear me. This is God's method. This is God's mechanism. This is the way God has purposed to provide for his people and to bring them into levels and realms of prosperity. If you call right now, you'll get through. Now hear what the word of God says because there are a lot of you, you're listening to me, you're watching me. You're saying, man of God, if I had $600 to sow, I would sow it. If I had $200 to sow, I would sow it. And listen, you can do it on your bank card. You can do it on your credit card. You can go to the internet. And it's a secure situation there and sow it. And you can do it immediately. But listen to me. Because I'm hearing in my spirit people saying, man, if I had that, I'd do it. But right now, I don't have that. Listen to what the Word of God says. The Word says, if there first be a willing heart. It is accepted. Somebody shout, it is. it is. No, 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 with some strength, shout, it is. It is. One more time, say, it is. it is. The Bible says if there first be a willing heart, it is accepted. Not according to what a man has not, but according to what he has. I learned this. I teach people this all over the nation and all over the nations of the world. We go to Africa, we go to, to, to South Africa, to Nigeria, to Nairobi, Kenya, and conduct meetings and I tell people all the time you say how can you go to 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 poverty stricken countries and tell them to sow because I understand if you don't start sowing you can't start reaping if you don't start sowing your seed can't stop start multiplying it is God's way it is God's system are you listening to me and so I want you to go to the phone right now and dial it and make you say Bishop if I had that I would do it I don't have it the Bible says that there first be a willing heart it is accepted not according to what a man has not but according to what he has so whatever the Spirit of God puts in your heart or soul to sow, and if you will obey Him, somebody shout the word obey. If you will obey Him, God will honor that seed just like you gave 600, just like you gave 200. If that's what's in your heart and that's what you can do, God will honor it. Now listen, if you can do what God has asked the man of God to ask us for in this season and come into agreement. Somebody say the word agreement. Agreement is a significant thing. If you can do that, you need to do it. And God knows whether you can or not. And if he's witnessing to you, you need to go to the phone. And you need to do it now because in a few minutes we're going to pray and we're going to believe God. And a supernatural thing is going to begin to re be released in your life. But if you don't have that, I want you right now to simply ask God. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to ask everybody in this room with me just to lift your hands one more time. Behind me, I'm going to ask you to lift your hands one more time. And, and if you're on the phone, keep dialing, keep talking. But if you're praying with me right now about what God would have you to do, I want you to lift up your hands wherever you are. Wherever you are in this nation, wherever you are 
in another nation around the world. You may be in Africa, South Africa, Nigeria. I understand we're on in the Middle East. Wherever you are listening to me, God will honor the seed that you sow if you determined to do it. So I want every person now just to lift up your hands before the Lord. This is a time of consecration. This is a time of dedication. And there are even people in this room that, that are listening to me right now. And you need to sow something. And maybe you need just to bring it on this altar. Because under this anointing, you need to sow. And hear me. You have to move when the anointing of God is present. Yes, the, oh, the, 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 the obedience will work at any time. When, when God's anointing is present, that's the time to move. So I want you to lift up your hands, wherever you are right now, and just say, God, what would you have me to do? Lord, what is it that you would have me to do? So right there, Mama, I'm talking to you. Sir, I'm talking to you. Yes, yes, God, I hear you. I'm talking. There's a businessman watching me, and you are in the trucking business, and you're believing God for an expansion in your trucking business. You, you have made up, you've, you've actually done the, the paperwork. I can see the papers spread out. And you've actually done the paperwork and you said, if I could just do this, this would happen. But nobody is lending and nobody's helping. I am telling you in Jesus' name that if you will simply sow the seed that God is telling you to sow, you're gonna see a supernatural thing begin to happen in your life. And I don't play with this kind of stuff. I'm saying what I know God is telling me to say, and you need to get on the phone and call. Your name is Ralph. Your name is Ralph. God just gave me your name. It's Ralph. And I know it as surely as I'm standing here. You need to go to the phone, sir. You need to go to the phone right now. There's a mother watching me. You are in the state of Missouri, and you are believing God for a healing in your daughter's life. She's about six or seven years old. You say, how do you know that? I don't know that. The Spirit of God is telling me right now to say these things. And as surely as I'm, as surely as I'm talking, it is exactly as I say. I don't miss in these types of things. I just don't. I've been doing this for 20 years. I understand when God speaks to me. I'm talking to you now. Mama, you need to commit this thing to God. And you need to sow a seed of your faith. Whatever it is, you need to act because you've been feeling as if you're on the sharp end of the spear and you've been feeling like there's nothing you can do and what has just happened is faith has risen in your heart and the Spirit of God has determined to have you move and you need to do it right now. Bishop, are you saying she can buy a healing? No. I'm saying that if she'll release her faith right now, something supernatural will happen. Jesus said this. He said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. Somebody say as. Say it again, as. He said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, I've got lines available. I'm asking you, mama. I'm asking you, sir, please, so that we can pray and agree with you tonight while this anointing is here. Go. Now listen. He said, if you have faith as. He didn't say the size. He said as a grain of mustard seed. That includes size. It doesn't have to be great. But what is it about a mustard seed? You sow it. You sow it. You sow it. So God says, if you have faith that you can sow, if you can get your faith and your sowing together and release it, then you'll be able to say and speak. And what you speak will be established to you. I want you right now, sir, right now, ma'am, right this moment, I want you to move to the phones. And I want you to say, you know what? In this time of blessing, in this time of favor, in this season of release, I'm going to lift this before the Lord. Whatever it is, it's time to move. Go to the phones right now. Some of you are waiting till I stop talking to go to the phone. Now is the time. I'm believing God. If you believe this anointing is for you, now's the time to move. Come on, lift your hands just a moment and begin to worship God. As we, in your embrace, As your presence now fills Sing that one more time Oh the glory while they're singing I want you to get that seed and sow it Go to the phone You want to give on your bank card, on your credit card There's a secure internet available And that information is also 
going to be on the screen so you know exactly where to go. Now is the time. Glory be to God. Now is the time for you to sow. Come on, worship God with me. There's a release right now that's happening all over the globe. I just sense the anointing of God begin to kick in on a whole nother level. Come on, worship God with me. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord God. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. Blessed be the name. We want to come into agreement. The Bible says that if any two of you shall agree as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them by the Father in heaven. And as we are in agreement right now internationally through the miracle of the Inspirational Network, and as you have sown your seed, we're going to pray and believe God for miracles. I'm telling you, there's a supernatural turnaround that's in the atmosphere and God is releasing it right now. So let's agree together. If you pray in the spirit, do it. If you pray in the understanding, do it. But let's agree. Father, in the name of Jesus, in this time of celebration, in this time of the Feast of Tabernacles, yes. as seed has been sown, as men and women of faith all across the globe are in agreement, you have said already you are commanding your blessing. We believe that and we receive the commanded blessing of the Lord in our houses, in our families, in our bodies, in our relationships, in our businesses, we decree that commanded blessing is released and we speak a turnaround right now. We release the ministering angels of God to go forth and do battle for that which belongs to the children of God. And we call in the harvest from the north, from the south, from the east yes, and the, from yes, the west, yes. we call it in right now in the name of Jesus and we count it done in Jesus' mighty name. Now, the best thing you can do right now is if you're in agreement is lift up your voice and begin to shout and thank yes. God for it. So, Hallelujah. Come on, church. Let's give the Lord a yes. clap offering. Thank you for watching the program today. We encourage you to visit the website on your screen and sign up today to receive your free Strengthen Your Walk daily video teaching. These short but powerful videos cover a wide range of topics to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. I was experiencing spiritual dryness, but David's timely message gave me assurance of God's love and favor, even during times of weakness. Sign up now. It's totally free. Be refreshed, be energized, and maximize your day.